God of Soul. This is Bass Talk Live. Your host, Mark Jeffries and Matt Pangrad. BTL is brought to you by Lawrence. King Lures, Bass Cat Boats, Ducket Fishing, Spro, Afco, Big Buy Baits, Sunline, and TH Marine. BTL coming at you. Good Tuesday, everybody. Welcome once again to another edition of BTL Bass Talk Live, where hopefully Matt and I are going to talk about bass fishing and anything else that we want to talk about. Yes, it has been a struggle here in Oklahoma, a massive quantity of ice. We have lost power. We have power back, and then we lose power again, then we get it back here. So that's why Matt's not in studio. The roads are a little dicey, and uh, we're going to try this all over again, Matthew. That sounds good. <laughs> I uh, I'm glad I'm not on the icy roads. Yeah, it's uh it, it's pretty bad. No school today, probably no school tomorrow. So I've got a couple of days in studio to get caught up on some stuff. And uh, good show today. We're gonna have uh, David Mullins on. And for those people that were on prior to the power going out here in the studio, we're kind of gonna recap what we talked about earlier. And probably the most important thing is I want to let everybody know next Monday. We're going to have Boyd Duckett on to discuss what Matt and I talked about yesterday in length about the schedule, the classic, the big five, all this stuff that's taking place. Uh, I'm going to the source because, yes, I voiced my concern as a fan of this game that the continuance of going to the same bodies of water over and over and over, I just told Boyd, I was like, you know what, man? I was a little disappointed because I thought you guys might be going – to some different spots because number one, the size of the field being 40 boats and number two, what a great way to expose these fantastic bodies of water that exist across America instead of going to the same ones over and over and over. And I voiced my concern about the BPT season starting during the Bassmaster Classic. Yeah. So, so we're going to, we're going to get into that with Boyd. Uh, right now we are also working on Boyd's going to, talk to Michael Malone, the guy that schedules everything for the BPT, to have him on at the same time. And hopefully we can get uh, answers to a number of questions as to why things have taken place the way that they have. Uh, and, and dude, I'm going to tell you, yesterday's show, a lot of feedback from the fans, a lot of the same frustration about going to the same bodies of water, and a lot of frustration on having an event on the same time as the Bassmaster Classic. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, to see how that shakes out because, like we said yesterday, regardless of how it went down, you now have a choice. You now have to make a decision. So yeah, yeah, uh, we shall see. I the other thing was is I texted Boyd uh, the story that I discussed yesterday that was on CNBC about the decrease in the number of people that are getting their media, their entertainment from cable right, and from the networks. And they're talking about within the next four to five years, a total over the last 12 years of almost 50 million people cutting the cord. Wow. That's a lot of people yeah. when you have your premise based upon television. So we'll, we'll get into that discussion too. Uh, but as for today, keep your fingers crossed. Let's hope the power does not go out again in this ice storm. Uh, I'm going to send you a picture, Matt. Do you, do you know and can you recall the trees that are right next to my house? I think they're, what are they, sycamores? I think they're sycamores. Of your old house? I remember the no. ice storm of your old house back yeah. when you lived down by... Uh back down in Norman. Remember yeah, that ice storm? Yeah. All, I mean, it was bad that year. Well, I, I have great concern that the trees that are next to my house right. are going to bust to smithereens and go right into my house and probably crush my windows and uh, the side of my house. too? Well, inside, not outside. But yeah, 
Oh, the joys <laughs> of being a subdivision homeowner. I, 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 I'm going to send you a picture of this. It, it is really cool looking, but it defines uh, a totally different meaning of cool when it's about to just totally demolish the side of your house. I think you're way over exaggerating. I Dude, think this you have a, no idea. I think this is another weather event. You like to, you like to oh, dramatize no. weather events. I'm not, that's why I'm sending there's you pictures, no, man. There's that's, no real uh, that's why I'm going to send you pictures that are within striking distance of your house. All right. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to send you pictures. Branch fall on the ground. No, nope, I'm going to send into I'm gonna, Carolyn's I'm, hammock on the porch or something. That, that's not, no, I'm going to send you pictures. I, think I am really, really exaggerating. Concerned. Yeah, I am not. So it's you like guys have no ice. Exaggerate. It's like you're always concerned about the 20 mile straight line winds. <laughs> the so there's six no to ice. Eight inches of snow. Uh, there's a. There's no ice in Tulsa. That's what you're telling little, me. There's a little bit of ice, but not. It's not horrid. No. No, it's no, definitely it's, worse in Norman. Yeah, and then uh, AJ sent me some pictures from Weatherford, which is even further west from where you are, about 90 yeah. miles west from me. And it's really, 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 really bad there. Yeah, they still making them practice outside? No, no. They shut down school today and tomorrow, okay. actually. So can't do that. All right, good show today. We're going to have David Mullins on just uh, uh, a few minutes after we take this short break and uh, talk about his season, man. He's in, he's at the top of the leaderboard in the Angler of the Year race, and I really want to get into – uh, what his season has been like, and I want to reflect back to that first season, his open season back in 2013, had an enormous amount of success, and then that very first event. I know I like to dwell on the bad, but I'm dwelling on the bad to talk about the good, Matthew. Mm -hmm. Bombed his first elite <laughs> series, but his next six were incredible. I mean, this it, year that he was dialed had, in, man, dialed uh, in. This year that he's had has been very impressive from consistency i mean you've seen the guys that we have talked about just just it's it's impressive to see his consistency given the number of difficult fisheries that they've gone to it's not like oh you know i caught 60 pounds but it took 75 to do well and finish 30th i mean you're talking with with, with the fall and the tough fishing and the lack of limits like it's really tough to stay up there. it's really easy to come in with zero or one or two on a day and he's yeah. like the only dude who hasn't done that at least one event. He's made it through the gauntlet of probably three or four of the top 10 best fisheries in America at the absolute worst time that you can fish them yeah. and has figured out how to survive them. So a very impressive angler of the year run that uh, you just kind of popped up as the leader with a decent lead over Austin Felix heading into the last event of the year on Lake Fork, which again is going to be a total unknown after uh chickamauga and uh yeah. gunnersville and i mean it's it's uh uh what's yeah. the one out in the carolinas that they just went to santee cooper yeah and fork i mean those are those are four of the top 10 best fisheries in the country to close out the year at the worst time you could fish them yeah no you're so. right man you're right uh let me ask you this if you're clark wendelin do you talk to the media? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Because of the crash and burn? Who cares? He's got three FLW Angler of the Year. Dude, He's like I, I'm a not nice taking dude. That's not what I asked. Why uh, would you I not talk to the media? If you crash and burn all 10, or if you win all 10, you should still <laughs> talk to the asking. media, Mark. That's a stupid I, I, question. It is not because, yeah, some, it, dude, you know, you know for a fact, you've been in this gig way too long. That some individuals in this game, when they have a disaster happen like that, they will not been, talk to people. Not someone who's been around for as long as he has and has seen as I mean, he know uh, the he knows as well as anybody that that's a real possibility. That's why I asked you the question. But you yeah, have to absolutely. okay. So do you agree or disagree that there would be some individuals in this game that would not talk to the media because of the crash and burn? I mean, there might be a couple guys if you hit them oh, on the dude, wrong. Come if on. you hit them on the wrong time, yeah. Yeah. Clark's not one of them. I don't. Yeah, feel you like. don't want to talk to people when you yeah, had a bad call, tournament. Did you call? I talk. I talk on BTL. I mean, it's like ninety percent <laughs> of my freaking tournaments, Mark. I talked to him. I mean, did you try, call Clark and he told you to get lost and he didn't no. really talk about it? No. 
Yeah, he would definitely he, talk about it. No, I just think it would be very, very interesting to see what he'd have to say. I mean, bottom line was, dude, it was brutally tough, and everybody yeah. knows that. As I said, I mean, Mullen is the only one who got through the gauntlet without yeah. a disaster. Yeah. They were the guys at the top. I mean, Austin, Austin did yeah. too. I mean, they just survived. No, I, in my opinion, I think that Clark would would come on this show and and would talk about it. Uh, but you know that there are certain professional athletes out there that when they are not, or when situations take place that do not showcase the level of performance that that they expect, that they refuse to talk to the media. That's why I brought it up. It's the only Clark, reason I brought it up. Clark wants his damn respect, Mark. <laughs> I kind of man, I kind of felt sorry for him because everybody it was all Clark and he had such a huge lead. Yeah, everyone was like, oh, he's the best in the fall. He's yeah. won it. There's no chance here. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I'll re I I'm know. gonna reach I mean, out to him. Like we'll I see. Said, that's a that's a hey, goal. Hey. We've never seen anything like it. That caliber of fishery this time of the year, that level of of uh what what's on the line and how crappy they were fishing. Yeah. Are if you he wants to come one on after what just happened in back to back to back weeks. I mean yeah. If I'm if David you, Mullins, I'm sitting on a throne with like a scepter going, look what I just did. <laughs> hey, if Clark wants to come on, great. If he doesn't want to come on, I totally understand it. Totally get it. I I would bet any amount of money he would come on. All right. We'll see. I'll try and get him booked for uh, maybe next week. All right, let's do this. Let's take a break. He has been waiting patiently through all the trials and tribulations that I've been going through here in Oklahoma City. We will be back with the man atop the leaderboard of the Angler of the Year race, David Mullins. Everybody stay tuned. We'll be right back. The ultimate fishing system starts with Lorentz HDS Live. The best fish finding tools from chirp sonar and fish reveal to side scan and down scan imaging and complete touchscreen control from your trolling motor to your big motor. We've paired one of the most iconic hulls in the history of bass boats with a proven lineup of trusted accessories. We're bringing you best in class value and performance, leaving others in your wake. Turnkey value, turnkey performance, the Pantera 2 is an overachiever in the 19-foot category. Once you hit the throttle, you'll feel the rush, and there's no looking back. Kevin, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just filling in for Billy. I need a 660 Shad crankbaits in uh, the Series 5 model. We're out. You're not out. You got all kinds of them right there. We're out. Kevin, I need six. Have a lollipop. I do not want a lollipop. Have a lollipop. Do you have it in sexy shad color? Let's face it, fishing electronics are no longer an afterthought. They've become a necessity. And at the Bass Tank, our experts match you with the right electronics, provide professional installation, and educate you to help maximize your catching results while providing support along the way. <laughs> because let's be honest, it's about catching, not just fishing. And when you're ready for better results, join the Bass Tank team. Visit us today on Facebook or go to thebasstank.com. Hey everybody, Ty Faircloth here. Want to show you one of my favorite braided lines, SX1 30 pound Sunline braid. I use this braided line for a couple of different applications and one of my favorites to use for this line is a swim jig. Cast great and it's small diameter and uh, just works really great on a swim jig. Another technique I like to use for 30 pound SX1 Sunline braid is whenever I'm flipping like a light, say an eighth to a quarter ounce weight in grass, small diameter, I don't lose much action on my worm, just works great in those scenarios. So if you're looking for a braided line for a swim jig, or fishing a light Texas rig, check out Sunline's SX1 30 pound braid. NAFCO's new URI performance shirts are made out of a new fabric. Aeromesh technology, Aeromesh fabric 
really breathable. You know, it just doesn't stick to you whenever you're sweating. It's 105 in Florida. You know, you got sun beating down. There's hardly any wind. You know, your shirt won't stick to your back or anything like that. Any little breeze gets through it. And all the AFCO features that you like with the hood, not without a hood, depending on which one you like. It's got odor technology, so your pits don't stink whenever you're sweating. It has thumb loops. Whenever you're driving down the lake, 70 miles an hour in a bass boat, you got thumb through here, sleeves won't roll up, so you have no excuse if you get somewhere. Any little breath of air gets through and cools you down, so make sure you check them out. Any fish, any water, any condition, AFCO has you covered. All right, we are back on a Tuesday, and we are ready to go to our special guest today. Real quick, Matthew, I want to remind everybody uh, the 45th anniversary of TH Marine taking place, and this week, the weekly deal is 25% off select Blue Water LEDs, and right there, you see the code. Use the code Blue Water Deals, and you'll get 25% off when you order online there at TH Marine. Uh, 45 years, long time to be in business, and another great deal for all the BTL fans out there to get 25% off select Blue Water LED elements right there. So good stuff. Take advantage of that. All right. I know the guy's been waiting a while. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can bring David in. David, you there, man? Yeah, I'm here, big guy. All right, man. Appreciate you being patient. Uh, dude, uh, Quite the performance this year. I know Matt and I have, have discussed, went back, looked at the stats, but just uh, uh, a, a very, very impressive performance on bodies of water that were extremely tough. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, they, they were tough. And uh, if you could just find a way to get some bites, you know, you could uh, move up a lot. And we we're fortunate enough to find a couple ways to get bites and you know it worked out what right. was your oh sorry mark what was your plan going into so like like we talked about before you came on we went gunnersville santee cooper lake chickamauga back to back to back events you're talking three of you could argue the top five fisheries in the country but it was at the most difficult time of the year were you going in trying to win the events, trying to survive the events? Did they set up? I mean, I know the, from being in Tennessee and a cranker, did they set up for you? Or what was your plan heading into Gunnersville? I didn't, man, I didn't have a plan. I don't, I don't think I ever have a plan uh, for any of these lakes. And I think uh, for me, if I start getting like a preconceived plan about what they should be doing, then I totally lose what's going on. So, no, I just showed up and uh, showed up. He went away. He's, <laughs> he, back. he's back now. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't show up with a plan. I just uh, just went fishing, and that's how it worked out. And uh, you know, a lot of times I'll get uh, if I get any preconceived deals, I'll just try to run that too long, and it's not going on. So I just showed up and went. Uh, David, these last three weeks, uh, you know, in the back to back to back. Has anything changed in, in the way that you fished? Has anything changed from how you approach stuff off the water? How has your life changed now after that third event with one going into it? Nothing? Is it just David Mullins and that's it? No, I guess. I've got a, I've got a bunch of phone calls and people ask me, uh, do you fish BFLs or what are you fishing? I heard you catch some fish, you know, <laughs> pretty much <laughs> you know, people who you are, but uh, no. His signal yeah, is not. Yeah, more. All right, you there, David? Lost his audio. Uh, David, Mark, you're, you're, 0 for, you're 0 for 2 because I, of the, the weather and Bullard's audio right now. Yeah. Are We're you, having are you there, one David? of those shows. No, his, his audio has gone. All right, let's now, see what now he's, he's doing. vertical with no audio. Yeah. I like that painting behind him, though. <laughs> Are those like flowers on the wall and stuff? I, I, I really don't know. It looks like no it's, audio there. He's yeah, gone. He's, He'll try to get back in there. I, that, that's all about his internet connection. 
but mm-hmm. I, yeah, you know, the one thing, over. <laughs> dude, I, I mean, I'm trying, we need I really to am finish. trying. Just move on to <laughs> Wednesday. I am really, really trying. All right, he's back. Let's see if we can bring him in here. David, you back now? Yeah, is that any better? Yeah, we got it. Hey, did you do you have stencil art on the wall behind you? <laughs> No, his internet signal is really bad. How about now? You okay. Got me? Yeah, we got you now for a brief yeah. moment. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, I'm over at a friend's house, so I'm. Uh, it was on the way to Lowe's, so I was like, I'll go over here and uh, and, and knock this out real quick. I got you. All right, so a lot of times you talk to guys who get on massive rolls, like like you're on now. Uh, and and one bait in particular will kind of carry them through. They get confidence in one thing, and then it rolls to the next tournament, and they say, screw it, I'm just going to keep chucking this because it worked before. Did that happen in that back-to-back-to-back where you had one thing that you kind of were like, I wasn't planning on doing this, but it worked in all three weeks? Uh, I had a chatterbait work at uh, Santee Cooper in uh, Chickamauga, but Gunnerville, I was catching some deep. I caught some shallow. I caught some punching. Caught some on a buzz bait. So er- everything worked there as far as you know, not dialed into one thing. But um, your chatterbait definitely ca- carried me over the over the last two, and it wasn't on purpose. It was, uh, you know, you figure out how do you get some bites and just roll with it, and that's uh, that's what I use there. Uh, David, I want to go back to the beginning when when you qualified for the Elite Series back in 2013. Your open performance, you know, you had a 49th, a second, I think a 26th. Uh, did did just a, an incredible open series of events there, and then that very first event that you had that was on Lake Seminole, uh, it, it kind of opened your eyes, I guess, because you had a triple digit finish. But then after that. You really got dialed in. What did you learn from that first year? And and what can you recall about that first tournament that you fished as an Elite Series guy? First tournament, you know, I'm, I'm pulling my boat with a 99 Ford diesel uh, stick shift, right? And uh, the, only way, the only way I was able to make the Elites was uh, the year before the Opens, I won, a, I won a brand new Ranger that fall, and I fished out of that Ranger – in the opens and qualified and then sold that ranger for my entry piece for the first year of the elite series. So that's the only way I could fish because, you know, I've said before, you know, God has a plan and everything just went perfect for me to do this and I, or I wouldn't be able to do it. And so I, I show up to Seminole, my first elite series tournament. I've got this old Ford stick shift, you know, <laughs> and uh, I asked the guy, you know, my marshal, do you want to, boat or truck he's like, i'll just get the truck i said what's the stick shift can you drive it he said yes so the next let's just cut it. long story short the first th- next thing i know like the water's up to the back doors in the truck in oh, yeah. oh wow that's how i started off my elite series is, is, and, and and i had to jump from the boat to the bed head of the t- oh, oh. oh no That was such a great story. <laughs> With no conclusion. He's trying. I can hear him trying. Man, nope, he's he left us in the bed of the truck. Uh, well, that kind of explains that performance there. Uh, you know wow. what? Everyone has that deal where it's like, this is 2020 in one picture or something. This yeah. show is 2020. <laughs> well we're trying here you know what folks here's what we're gonna do all right because i want to give david obviously uh his time to uh talk about his season and talk about all right he's back now let's see here we'll give it one more shot all right you there man sorry guys i got one number it keeps calling me and every time i hit decline it 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 kicks me off but anyway so oh okay there, my my trucks have sunk i have to get from the boat jump on top the uh the cab of my truck crawl across there get on top of the the cab come in through the window pull the truck up by the time i'm getting i'm getting my truck they're already calling my name to go through uh check-in to blast off so i have to sprint but so let's just say my first day i am a mess 
I can't catch anything. I'm already late to check. I had to stop outside the canal at Seminole just to get my rods on deck, see what I was going to throw, and put my and put my graphs on, and why everybody's blasting off by me. So I didn't start off good there, wow. but I th- I think from there on I ran like five or six checks in a row. Oh yeah. Until I got up north, and that's uh, people ask me what's the difference in this year catching them in previous years is I've got through a solid northern swing and and uh, I didn't have a stumble up there, and that that nor- northern swing's always kind of been my plague. Yeah. All so right. you went from that. You know what you went. After that, you went 42nd, 42nd, 30th, 28th, and then a second in the open. So would you have even been able to make it through the rest of that season had you not started catching them after Seminole? No. I mean, no. I mean, especially I, I maybe would have got through half or most of that season, but, you know, I had to get some checks. And, you know, even even like a year or two after that, when we went to Havasu in Sacramento, I think leaving Sacramento, going to Havasu, I had like $1,000 in my name. But I didn't get a check at Havasu. I never made it. I didn't got a check at Havasu. And I said everything's – Everything for me has not been easy, but it worked out perfectly. Because you're going, I mean, 42nd, 42nd, 30th is like one bad decision away from, damn, I almost cashed a check. Mm, oh, yeah. That's <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I remember that one year that John Bondy was like, man, I need to start cashing checks. And he finished like 52nd, in like four in a row and was yeah. like, ah, I'm done. The Moose Tracks is headed back to Canada. I still remember that year because I should have got another check and tied Justin Lucas for that last check at Cayuga that year, and he ended up. Oh, he's getting and another phone call. Called him. Oh, he's back. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where I left off, but I, I remember that same year I, I tied Justin Lucas for the last check at Cayuga and didn't uh, – and missed that one out on the tiebreaker. I would have got another check that year. So yeah, fifty per solid rookie year. I just didn't uh, just didn't make it to the northern swings. Justin Lucas always getting in people's way. <laughs> All right, man. H- how are you going to approach Fork? Any different? The same? The usual plan? What are your thoughts? Yeah, no different. I'm just going, you know, just going out there and do the best you can, and hopefully find a way to get some bites and uh, and go from there. What's your history on Fork? I've only been there once, and it was uh, last year, year before last, whenever we went. And uh, I, Honestly, I should have had a check there. I had one fish on the bed that I left too early, and by the time I got back, Drew Benton catches it, and it's like a four and a half. And if I catch that one fish, then uh, then I make a check there. But, you know, it, was a, it seemed like that place was really small and had a heck of a lot of pressure, and that's the only thing I know about it. But, uh, yeah, we're not going to approach it any differently. We're just going to. Like I said, go and hopefully we can find a way to get bit and and roll with it. But man, it's you know this angler year deals a shootout. It, there's like five or six people that can win it, and whoever finishes in the top ten is going to win this deal. And uh, that's why it should be at the end of the year. And it's been a long time since we've had a race this close, and I'm looking forward to to the opportunity. At what point did you realize you would be in that mix? And then at what point did you? I mean, do you remember the first time you looked and went, uh, "I'm leading the dang thing." Yeah, I didn't even look. Somebody told me because, you know, we all thought Clark was going to win it because, mm-hmm. man, he's so, he's so talented and he's been there and won so many angles of the years. He's a great, great fisherman, great guy. And uh, I just go to show you fall, you can stumble real easy. It, it's just uh, it's a tough time of year to fish. And it uh, we thought he was going to run away with it and then come out of Chickamauga and I've got a lead. And you know, it just surprised me too. Uh, but, uh, Here we are. (laughs) Now, your background is you're a teacher, right? Yes, sir. And you also hunt a lot, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, typically you wouldn't think you'd have a lot of time on the water in the fall time of the year between the tree and the classroom. Is it something that you fish year round a lot of the time? Or is this kind of like, oh, this is, well, I mean, is this kind of new for you fishing this much this late into the season? Well, when I fished at home, we had all of our big money tournaments were in the fall, and I know how much of a, you know, how, how hard they can be mm-hmm. to get bit. And uh, so I'm used to fishing the fall around the house, but the last six years, I have not fished at all. And when I'm home, I don't even pick up a rod usually. And, you know, right now, I don't think, I think about hunting season. I know I got an AOY deal to go on, but I'm just so ready to be done with fishing for this fall. And I got my, uh, I've got a little duck impoundment here at the house that we, uh, We've moved our, our water pumps down, start pumping water into it yesterday, got all the hoses ran, and uh, 
right now that's that's what i'm <laughs> that's what i'm wanting to do wow all right man i i'm curious what part of your game is really improved david from the aspect of where you were in 2013 to now over the last seven years oh god everything i mean uh in 13 the only thing i you know the only thing i knew was cherokee and douglas right here at the house and um you know we don't have grass or any kind of diverse fisheries we're just highland reservoirs and that's all i knew and and it took me a long time to uh, go to these other lakes you know and learn little deals about how to approach them and, and what the fish do and and it, it, it took me a long time. I mean, I, I told that to Luke Duncan when I was on his podcast. I, I didn't even own a chatterbait my first year of, uh, of the Elite Series. We never even threw one around here. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're primarily upper waters of Tennessee River. Now, we're diverse as far as we can go out and 40 foot and catch smallmouth, or we can grind a square bill all day, too, you know. So we've got that diversity, but there's a lot we're missing, and it took me a long time to understand how fish relate to different different places and different structures and uh it gets a little better every year and hopefully i can continue proving it improve it every year all right has there been somebody either on tour or off tour that's really helped you with this whole learning process oh man aaron martins if it wasn't for him i wouldn't have been here uh you know i knew aaron for years before i got on tour and that's the only reason i fished the opens is he came up and fished with me one before they had the uh, elite series on douglas back in like 12 or 13 and you know, he told me why I was fishing. If I ever wanted to do it, he thought I could do it because of um, he knew who he fished against. He thought I was better than some of them. And, the, and then they announced the, the open schedule not long after that. And uh, Douglas was like the second event. So, I, you know, I talked to him and I said, you think you think uh, we could travel together and see if I can make this open deal? And uh, so he said, yeah. So we ended up staying in his camper and I traveled the opens and uh and uh, end up making it my first year trying it. So, wow. yeah, definitely, Aaron. And, dude, I, I, my, uh, the, the people I stay with now, uh, Drew Benton and Drew Cook, have been a huge help, too, because when you find people you trust and uh, and that you get along with and that you trust them with information. Getting another call. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had this situation before, You're man. Gonna have a, you ever have a good time editing this for the iTunes? I know no, it's it's going out the way it is. Hopefully, he'll come back after he takes that phone call. That's weird. I did not I've never, know that about Aaron. I didn't either. That's is he coming back? Maybe he's just giving up. He's like, ah, that's it. I'm done. No, he's coming back here. Let's see here. All right, he's back. Wow. All right, guys. This whoever I figure out this six one five number is, and we'll kill him. <laughs> That's what I do. I have that happen sometimes, and I just Google where it's from. Uh, whoever I know in Nashville, you're gonna get beat when I have to drive through. Anyway, <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, but like I was saying, you know, I've got two good roommates and Drew Benton, Drew Cook, and um, you know, when you when you got somebody that you trust the information, you trust. Uh, uh, they're going to tell you the truth, and and we all get along. That's 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 a huge help. And I can tell you twice, Drew Benton saved my butt this year. Once on you follow, and uh, at, at Santee Cooper, I was struggling too. And he he told me of an area that he was getting some bites in, and I kind of went way outside that area and found my own little deal over there. And you know, if it wasn't for those two things, I wouldn't I wouldn't have caught him there. So, you know, I've got uh, I've got two good roommates that we trust each other, and we all share information, and it helps hmm. out a lot. Okay, let me ask you this, because because I'm fishing the opens this year. I you're rooming with someone else, and you talk about like when you when someone's on them and someone's not. So how does that work for you? You're you're practicing. You've got these guys. Are you sharing information, or do you come to them and say, "Dude, I don't have crap. Like I'm about to get my ass kicked. Do you have anything that I could have, or or like a tip? Like just I know you've got a bunch of guys, people who listen to fish club, BFL, that level of stuff too, and. Uh, it just talk about how it works as far as helping each other out and making sure everyone's taken care of and happy without stepping on the other guy's toes too and ending up fishing his exact same stuff. Yeah, I don't try to do fish the exact same stuff. Uh, you know, if one of us is struggling, the other one tell us, uh, you know, uh, vaguely what what to do. Not necessarily spots, uh, but like, like on uh, – 
Lake Travis when when Benton won that. I told him, I said, dude, they'll they'll bite the top water in the middle of the day in the sunshine. He didn't believe me, I, and I I went in the first pocket last day of practice and caught like a a four pounder in there, and he's like, you gotta be kidding me. So he went and tried it in another pocket, and he caught two four pounders, and he ends up winning the tournament. So I didn't oh, tell him cool. exactly where, but I told him what to do and what they were biting on. And the same goes for Cook at Cayuga last year. He called me up. He said, man, I can't get a bite. And I was just like, take a crankbait, go down a grass line. And first grass line he went to, he caught it. Now, it wasn't the grass line I was fishing, but that that, that goes to show you, you know, just just good information and trusting somebody to tell you the truth is, is huge. And uh, it works out for us. And I, we don't share, like, this is a spot, mm -hmm. have we yet? But we just give the information about uh, how we think we can get bit. I, I got one more question, then. Do you consider yourself an old-school East Tennessee cranker? Okay. Or are you a versatile? Are you a versatile do whatever it takes guy? Or are you a crankbait guy who has to throw other stuff to get by sometimes? Oh no, you can't be one sided. Am I an old school cranker? Yes, but you can't be one sided. And um, you know, I've caught them on crankbaits a few times this year, but I, I haven't. Uh, I haven't had a lot of tournaments where I've caught them cranking. You know, but uh, yeah, I'm old school. But you still gotta, you still gotta be versatile and and figure out what's going on. It can't be one-sided with everything. Because that'd be interesting that if, if, depending on how things shake out, I mean, you're, you're in position to win an angler of the year and haven't really been able to rely on your strong suit much of the year. Yeah, and that, that's helped out a lot because I like to wind stuff around, whether it be a mm -hmm. crankbait, chatterbait, you know. Phone call. Nashville. What was that, what was that area code, 615? Yeah. <laughs> He got it back. It's probably an uh, agent I, in Nashville calling. <laughs> am I there? Can you yes. You're there. You're yes. here. You got. We got you. So anyway, I figured out who it is. It, it's Phoenix Boats trying to get a hold of me. Okay. Oh, okay. Anyway. We'll, <laughs> we'll wrap this you up. Just to kick, you, you just threatened to kick Phoenix Boats' butt on a live TV when, when you drive through. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll wrap this up here pretty quick, David, so you can take care of business. Jeez, uh, I, I can't remember what I was talking about. But yeah, you you're gotta, talk, talking about cranking, relying on cranking to. Yeah. yeah, there's you know there's certain situations where it, it works, but you've got to be versatile, and I, I think that's what's helped me the last few years is just learning more, uh, learning more tricks, learning the lakes a lot better, and learning how they, what they eat on, and and what 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 things they relate to, and. That's helped out a lot. But, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely an old-school cranker. I like cranking. Very nice. What do you teach, or what did you teach? I taught in high school, uh, most of the juniors and seniors. We taught econ, finance, uh, computers, uh, business courses is what yeah. I had. Jeffrey's cook. That, Jeffrey's that's what I, yeah. did that exact same thing at high school. Yeah. Could you imagine cool. that? I would much rather have Mullins than you, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it is what it is. Uh, did you enjoy it, man? What, was it something that you really liked? It, it, uh, do you miss it? it I mean, obviously, yeah. you're at t the top of the bass fishing world, but, you know, some people are born to be teachers. Others aren't. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I miss the kids, and uh, I miss coaching. I love coaching basketball. I was assistant coach of basketball at two different schools. And, uh, you know, I had uh, usually – usually uh, – teachers make really good summertime fishermen because they're off all summer and one of my partners that i that i fished with for, for a long time he was a, he was an elementary school teacher and, and we would go out in summer you know and instructor fish all summer long and that was a that was a big part of it at the time off but I, yeah i enjoyed it and uh i missed a lot of those kids and i just renewed my license like two months ago just in case anything ever went south <laughs> now go back yeah, I don't think you'll be needing that anytime soon. All right, we got to see a picture of the dog before we go. Come here, bro. Come on. Come here. Yes. Yep. He's got his little toy. Come here. Come here. That's a that's a hunting dog, huh? Yeah. Buddy, come here. Bring him. <laughs> he's ready to go. He is ready to go. He's got him over here. He's gonna beat me to death with his tail. <laughs> All right, yeah. David, man. We, we appreciate you being flexible with all the power situations and uh, the phone calls to get this knocked out. But, man, we wish you nothing but the best at Lake Fork, and uh, hopefully you will raise that trophy above your head and uh, be Angler of the Year, man. 
Well, that would be awesome. And I, I apologize for Gary Klaus to keep calling me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll try to talk with him. Uh, tell him when I start ignoring his calls to quit calling, don't continue calling. And uh, <laughs> this, this, this might be penalties or fines associated later in the year, uh, depending on how bad this editing is going to be. No, it's Bye. all good, man. It's <laughs> it's it's all good. All right, man. Take care, David. Hey, thanks for having me on. God bless, guys. All right, man. See you. See you. Wow, man, that's like a carbon copy of what of, you do. I, yeah, except catch fish because I can't do that. And then but. you act just like. If it was Gary calling, like if you try to get a hold of me and I don't answer, I'm doing something. You just continually call back, and then I'm free, and I get to the point where I'm like, "Screw you, I'm not answering," even though I'm free now. And then I don't answer out of principle. Yeah, I get it. I get it, man. So uh, that was uh, quite the interview, there, folks. If you're listening to the replay on iTunes or any other podcast platform, I apologize for that, but you got to understand, <laughs> we have really been that going through numerous back, challenges setback btl maybe three to five years mark <laughs> oh my gosh man here i am trying to power through it and uh oh, yeah. it is what it is we got i tried i tried but uh, tomorrow, good day, what do man. we got tomorrow uh cool show tomorrow we're gonna have frank the tank on okay and we're also gonna have brandon polinick on live nice. from the water uh at the eastern open when i when i called to to talk to him i forgot that he was fishing the eastern open and he's like yeah i'll come on i was like no 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 you don't need to do that dude you're fishing no 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 i want to here we'll just do it live from the water during practice Good so deal. we'll get his take on what's going on where are they at i don't even remember where they're at uh they're at uh that cherokee yeah that's the is place. it cherokee it's got the small mouth and the large mouth and all the clay points and stuff. That's where the, everyone was catching yeah. them on the Damiki rig super early in the year when we started it out there. Yeah. Remember, I think Terry Scroggins cashed a check on a 16-ounce crappie jig that he bought at the <laughs> tackle store. I remember I'm not, that. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Wow. So uh, we'll check in with Brandon tomorrow. And then uh, uh, Monday, Ducket. Tuesday, Chris, right? Chris? Is that correct? Sam. Sam, Chris. Yeah. What's his last name? Sobe. Sobe. So Soberick, I think, is his last All name. Right, but people call him Sobe. Sobe. Yeah, he's done stuff with the Guggen Squad and Scott Martin. He has his own channel. He's big. Yeah. He's he's like next level big league social media marketing management of the guys with the millions and hundreds of thousands yeah. of followers. All right, there you have it. And then uh, this afternoon, we're going to have a call with John from Illinois, who is going to be taking part in the uh, excursion with you now. And you. It, yeah, it's a BTL it, experience, Mark. It, it is. It definitely is. Now, if you're going to go bass fishing, where are you going to go? Any idea yet? Uh, if we're going to go bass fishing, we're going to go to 10 Killer. Oh, that's a good choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good choice. Now, and what about throw, crappie fishing? If uh, I can't name the lake. Oh, okay. So a special. We're going to <laughs> the lake X, Y, and Z of crappie fishing. The Holy Grail. I think. All right. We'll, All right. Just All depends right. on what he wants to do. Okay. So we will evaluate. We need to get the a new weather. prop on though. Do what? <laughs> I need to get a new prop on though. Oh yeah, you do. Well, you got yeah. a little. You got a little jack in your pocket there yeah yeah that's gonna go down once it's no longer 32 and raining profusely i'll get the prop fixed yeah yeah you need to call uh todd that's who you need to call is that frank's friend frank's, frank's friend buddy. man i talked yeah. to frank on the phone for like an hour yesterday yeah it's good stuff give uh give todd a call man he'll hook you up with a prop well i i just i mean i know what i need i just need a regular one no, I'm serious. He'll hook you up, man. Call Todd. Call Frank. Get hooked up with Todd, and uh, he'll get you taken care of. You got to get that in quick, though, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you got to get that shipped in. They don't sell them at Walmart? No. <laughs> no. No, they don't. They do not. All right, what are you going to do the rest of the day, man, in the uh, uh, I've got beautiful to get weather? Un I've got to get unpacked. I've got to get my life back to normal. You know, it's been two and a half, three weeks for me on the road. I have no clean clothes. I mean, I have nothing. 
I've just been living out of a little suitcase. I had to go buy underwear at TJ Maxx <laughs> yesterday afternoon. Oh so I had a more fresh pair just because everything is so disorganized. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of disorganized, folks, thank you for being patient today with everything we had going on uh, with the phone issues and the uh, the power outages here in Oklahoma. So uh, thank you so much for hanging around. Thank you, David Mullins, for uh, being patient and being on the show. Tomorrow, Frank the Tank, Polinick. I don't know if Matt's going to be in studio. We'll keep you posted. If not, it's going to be the look that you see right here, right now. All right? Matt, be safe, man. I'll talk to you this afternoon. Thanks, Bart. All right, that's it. We're out of here, folks. Be safe.